We all work really hard for our money and we're all subjected to these messages on social media like run don't walk, viral product, limited edition, you need this. Messages that try to convince us that we need the latest trendy viral product in order to stay relevant or you know messages that convince us that we need to spend money in order to participate in trends. But I'm currently in the practice of loving what I own and really looking inward to understand what products truly work for me and which ones don't so that I can just filter out all the noise. There are so many products that I no longer buy and today I wanted to share them with you so that you can look at your own preferences and collection and we could do a little bit of conscious consumerism together and you can try to save money and understand what your specific needs are and we can just filter out the rest. This video was inspired by my friend Devin Jessmer. She did an Instagram reel sharing the products that she's no longer buying so I'll leave that linked in the description box below. And the first product that I'm no longer buying are serums that have a very high concentration of active ingredients. I have very sensitive skin because of EDS and anytime I try a skincare serum that's like 20% niacinamide 20% vitamin C. It just ends up irritating the hell out of my skin, which gives me the opposite effect of what I want. I've watched a lot of content from dermatologists on YouTube and they all say that a higher concentration does not necessarily mean that it's more effective. And it can be really tempting to buy those products because we want results. We don't want to spend our money on products that are not really doing anything. We want good bang for our buck. But at the end of the day, I know myself and I know that my skin just cannot tolerate pretty much anything. <laughs> and that's a good segue into the next one. I'm also no longer buying retinol and retinoids, and that's because I have prescription tretinoin, and I also alternate that with Epiduoforte, which is adapalene with benzoyl peroxide. I find that Epiduoforte helps with my hormonal acne a lot better than tret does, but tretinoin and Tazerac are known as the gold standard for softening fine lines and wrinkles, so I like to alternate both of them to make sure that I'm kind of covering all of my bases, and that just means that, you know, why would I want to go out and review a new retinol if it's not going to be nearly as effective as the prescriptions that I'm on already? And that also means if a brand sends me a new retinol or retinoid in PR, I can't really tell you if it's going to give me great results or not because I've been on Tret and Epiduoforte for so long. So I'm very grateful for the skincare brands that want to send me retinols and retinoids, but there's just really no point in me testing them out. And related to that, another product I'm no longer buying are chemical exfoliants. They just have no place in my routine because I'm on Tretinoin and Epiduoforte. Though retinol and retinoids don't act in the same way as a chemical exfoliant, they do promote cell turnover. So I find that I just really don't need exfoliation when I'm doing my tretinoin and my epiduoforte. I have had brands send me so many chemical exfoliants and I bought all of the viral ones and every single time they just end up absolutely inflaming my skin or they do absolutely nothing if they feel really gentle. Ever since I stopped using chemical exfoliants, I want to say like eight months ago, my skin has just been in much better condition in terms of my barrier because with EDS, I do have a compromised skin barrier as it is and I really don't need to be using products that are going to make that even more difficult and continue to compromise my skin barrier. A few months ago, I also also decided to stop buying any glittery or metallic liquid eyeshadow. Now matte liquid eyeshadows are a different story. I just find that I have a really hard time applying and blending metallic liquid eyeshadows. Like even the about face fractal eye paints that everyone's obsessed with, I still feel like those are a little bit patchy unless I apply them as a glitter topper. And if I just take a little bit and like pat it on my eyelid on top of another eyeshadow, that's a great way I can use metallic eyeshadow. But I just feel like they are never smooth if you want an even application in like an opaque kind of shadow. They're just always patchy on me and I'm not going to zoom you in right now, but this right eye has more excess skin than my left eye and it's a little bit more hooded. So I have a really hard time with the metallic liquid eyeshadows, especially on my right eye because they just do not stick to the part of my right eye that is more hooded. After trying so many metallic eyeshadows from the drugstore all the way up to luxury beauty brands, I just realized it is a waste of my money. It doesn't work on my eye shape or maybe it's just my not so great makeup skills. I don't know, but either way, there's no point in me buying them. The next category of products I'm no longer buying are backups. And Dev said this one as well. So I'm glad we're kind of on the same page here. I used to buy backups all the time because I thought I was doing the right thing economically. You know, when that Sephora VIB sale would roll around or when it was Black Friday, I would always stock up on my favorite skincare products. And I would buy like four at a time thinking that economically that was the right thing to do because you're getting them at a discount. But we just bought a house that's less than a thousand square feet. And I do not have the storage to have a bunch of backups under my sink anymore. But I also realized that I was forcing myself to spend like hundreds of dollars at a time when it was entirely unnecessary. I could just wait until I run out of the product and then buy it at full price and I'm not spending as much money. So backups are an easy thing to stop buying to save money. All right, <laughs> the next one is a little difficult. So I'm trying, keyword trying, not to buy any products that have a certain fragrance. And I'm talking about lip products. I'm really trying not to buy anything that has a floral scent. And I'm pretty good about that because I really, really hate floral scents. But I'm also trying to avoid purchasing lip products that have a coconut or a mint scent. 
and that's difficult. You know, for me, I really liked the whole Tarte Maracuja line, but it all has this very nutty kind of coconut scent, and I really don't like it. I ended up purchasing a couple of the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip formula, and I ended up never reaching for it because I just don't like that coconut smell. And it's kind of confusing because it's a specific kind of coconut. It's that like nutty coconut that I really don't like, but if it's more of like a pina colada kind of coconut, I can totally get on board with that. But mint is the really confusing one for me because there are some products in my collection that have a little bit of a peppermint smell or a little bit of a cooling effect and I really like them. And then there are others I try and I absolutely hate them. I haven't yet been able to figure out exactly what kind of mint bothers me and what kind doesn't, but I just don't ever find myself craving to reach for those kinds of products if they do have a kind of mint scent or a cooling effect. I much prefer my lip products to have some type of a vanilla or a baked good scent or something really fruity. Oh, man, I really tried to force a square peg into a round hole with the Chanel gloss. The Chanel gloss in Rose Naif. I purchased it because all my friends loved it and we all went to the Chanel boutique in New York together and it was just, it was a stunning color and formula. And it was very lightly scented rose. Like you could barely smell it. And the formula was so plush and it had that glass-like shine and it had this beautiful cushion to it and the color was stunning, but I just never reached for it. So I gave it a positive review on my channel because I thought the formula and the color were incredible. And then in a couple videos later, I ended up decluttering it and a bunch of people got really mad at me and accused me of lying and being a dishonest YouTuber. But really you have to understand the context, which is that sometimes we make mistakes. <laughs> like we are not perfect, obviously. I thought I was gonna love that product. I mean, I did. The formula and the color were amazing, but I didn't realize just how off-putting even a hint of a rose smell was gonna be for me. So from that Chanel gloss, I realized if it's got a floral scent, I'm not gonna buy it. Another product I'm no longer buying are mascaras. And that's simply because I have my Holy Grail. I've had it for years and truly nothing has ever come close to beating it. It's the Thrive Liquid Length Tubing Mascara. And I'll drop in a clip here so you can see what I'm talking about. First of all, this rinses off with warm water. If a mascara requires me to use eye makeup remover, there is not a chance in hell I'm ever gonna reach for it. I want something that is super easy to remove and doesn't leave any like little bits of mascara in my eyelashes after I get out of the shower. But I also find that this mascara is one of the only ones that doesn't flake or smudge on me whatsoever. Even other tubing mascaras tend to flake and smudge on me, but the Thrive is really the only one that doesn't. And it's the only one that maintains a curl for me and lasts all day. It gives me the length that I need because it's a tubing formula. It also gives me volume without looking like spider lashes. It just really is my perfect mascara. And mascaras are so subjective. Like I have never met a single person who feels the same way about every mascara that I do. And I'm sure that you agree because every time we try mascaras, I think we all have different experiences from everyone. And because I found my absolute tip top holy grail mascara, I just don't see why I would need to buy more. The next category I am currently no longer buying, but this is more of a temporary thing is lip balms. I don't know if you watch my big lip balm, lip balm, lip balm? <laughs> I don't know if you watched my big lip balm deep dive, but I'll leave it in the description box below. I reviewed something like 54 lip balms in all different categories. And I have a lot of lip balm now. I do not need any more lip balms. And it's funny because people keep messaging me and commenting about the new topicals lip balm, but it smells like mint. And so I keep telling people like, I really want to try it. I know that you say it's amazing and it's thick, but it has a minty smell and I'm just not going to reach for it. So if you've recommended the topicals lip balm to me, I'm not going to buy it. I'm tempted, but I'm not going to. I have like, 30 lip balms and I really need to try to work my way through those bad boys. Another product I'm no longer buying are dewy sunscreens. And this is a tough one because I'm constantly on the hunt for the best mineral sunscreen. My skin is so sensitive and reactive. It hates chemical sunscreen, especially any in the US I have to avoid. The only chemical sunscreen that truly does not irritate me is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun. I believe that's what it's called. I just got it a week ago and I absolutely love it. But even that one is just too dewy for me to wear under makeup. My perfect sunscreen is the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense, which is what I wear anytime I'm wearing makeup, like today. Just looks like a beautiful soft matte finish. It's kind of like a primer. It adheres to the makeup really well, but it's only SPF 30, and I really want a soft matte, lightweight sunscreen that's SPF 50 and mineral-based. So I'm always tempted to buy new sunscreen launches that are coming out in hopes that it's gonna be the one, but they always end up being so wet looking on my skin, and then I just waste all my money, and it's like I try to use them up on my body, but then they just feel really 
sticky and they get on my clothes and it's a disaster. So I have enough sunscreens for the moment. I'm not gonna give into the hype on sunscreens because I find that even my friends who I trust wholeheartedly, they will give a positive review to a sunscreen and say that it has a natural finish. But on me with my combination skin that gets quite oily when I'm wearing makeup, it ends up just looking really dewy on me even if sometimes the sunscreen has a natural finish. So I'm currently in the practice of taking all reviews with a grain of salt. Doesn't matter how much you trust an influencer, even me. Beauty is so subjective and our experience with products really depends on our skin tone, our skin type and condition, climate. You know, there's so many different factors that go into our experience with all products, even mascaras. Like the climate when you're applying a mascara can totally change the way that it looks and holds on your lashes. And so I'm trying to always take that context into every review that I watch on YouTube and Instagram. And that way I can just keep that voice in the back of my head that says, okay, everybody's loving this sunscreen, but those are also the same people that loved all these other sunscreens that you tried that you didn't like. So maybe remember that and you don't have to spend the money on this right now. And on that note, I'm also trying to avoid purchasing viral products. Listen, if you have been subscribed to me for a bit, you know that I'm very critical and I'm brutally honest. And a lot of people call me extremely negative, but I like to just say that I'm picky and it's a good thing because it helps me spend less money. I like that about myself. I don't want to be spending all my hard earned money on every single viral beauty launch because most of the time I think they're just okay. A product having a viral moment does not mean that it's a perfect product. And it does not mean that it's gonna be the right fit for every single consumer out there. What happens is one person or a few people have a viral moment around a new product launch or an old product launch, and then everybody piggybacks off of that and wants to have that viral moment. And so then all these products are going viral, not because they deserve to go viral, but because all of the influencers just wanna have a viral moment. And that's where I encourage you to try to filter out the noise when it comes to product reviews. It's also why I recommend staying away from beauty TikTok talk. For me, beauty YouTube is it. That's where I can get all my information, education. I like long form content when it comes to shopping and making the right purchasing decisions for myself. TikTok for me is a place of entertainment. It is not a place where I feel you can get enough information to make an informed purchase. A little bit of a sidebar there, but it is relevant. So if you've been kind of struggling with, you know, exercising that muscle of control because you just get so interested and intrigued by all the viral moments, just maybe have in the back of your mind that that doesn't necessarily mean that they're great products. I've also decided to stop buying primers. I feel duped, misled, befuddled by primers. I just, I feel like every primer I've tried has all of these huge claims about how it's gonna transform your makeup and make it wear longer and look more seamless, blur your pores, hydrate your skin, yada, yada, yada. I don't know, I haven't met a single primer that really changes my makeup. Personally, I think my Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Sunscreen is like a perfect makeup primer. It might be first important for me to add context that I really don't find that I have an issue with my makeup fading that much throughout the day. And it's important to also understand that I work from home, like my corporate job is full-time remote. So I'm not out and about, you know, running around doing things. I'm not like constantly moving around, touching my face, getting sweaty or whatever. I'm not really like putting my makeup through the ringer every day, you know what I mean? And because I work from home, I just don't find it to be an issue like touching up my face as needed. So for me, primers just feel like a wholly unnecessary step. And I would go as far as saying most primers, I feel like actually mess up my makeup. And that's because a lot of the primers I've tried are water-based, but my Paula's Choice sunscreen, that is the sunscreen I wear under makeup every single time, has silicone in it, has dimethicone. And so if you have dimethicone in water, that's when you're going to have issues with pilling and the texture being a little bit off. So for me, water-based primers are especially a no. But even when I try primers that have some dimethicone in them, I just find that they don't really do much for me. So it's just an easy way for me to save my money. And I have a very similar argument for setting sprays as well. Like I said, you know, I find that my makeup doesn't have much of an issue with fading or creasing throughout the day. Even when I go to Coachella and I'm in like 105 degree weather and I'm sweating my balls off, I find that a lot of the products I use just stay really well on my face. Like my Armani Luminous Silk Foundation lasts incredibly well throughout the day. Same with my Fit Glow Concealer, my Fit Glow Powder, the Milk Makeup or the Bodyography Blush Stains. Pretty much any powder blush lasts really well on me. My Thrive Mascara never fades or creases. So I really just don't find that I have much of a need for setting spray. The only times I feel like 
a setting spray is necessary for me is on one hand, if I overpower and I need to add a little bit of oil back into my face, that's one occasion where it can definitely be helpful to have one on hand. Sometimes I also do find that with powders, I like to have a little bit of a setting spray just to kind of melt everything in together. But you know, I have like three setting sprays. I use them maybe five times a year and I just, I don't need to buy any more. I went on and on about this one in my beauty trends I want to die video and I'll leave that link to the description box below if you haven't seen it. I'm really proud of it. It's my first video to ever hit 100,000 views. I've been on YouTube for almost five years and my channel has just been an absolute grindy work of labor. I've never had a viral moment and it just feels really nice that some people responded really well to that video. So if you watched it and commented, thank you very much. It means a lot. But kind of on that note of the beauty trends I want to die video, I'm no longer buying lip oils. I do not see the point of lip oils whatsoever. And I know a lot of you love them. So remember, this is not to offend your favorite products. We all have so many different preferences. I just find that with my lips, I need something that is going to stay, something thicker, more Exclusive, a little tacky, something with a little bit of cushion. And I just find that lip oils make my lips feel drier, like almost all of them with the exception of a couple. And anytime I've ever like put coconut oil on my lips, I get the same feeling. Like I've, I've just experimented rubbing different oils on my lips before and seeing what the effect was. And I've just never found it to be something that actually provides any nourishment. I think lip oils provide hydration, but then I need something on top to really lock it in and prevent that transepidermal water loss. And I also find that due to the nature of lip oils being more thin and runny, the pigment can a lot of times be really uneven. It can settle into any texture. And if you swatch it on the back of your hand, I'll often see that the thinner formulas are the ones where the pigment just kind of settles into my hair follicles. I want the opposite. I want a thicker product with smooth pigment that is just gonna like give me that glass-like shine. And I just find that lip oils, they don't really feel that comfortable and they don't look that great either. But I feel like the beauty industry has just bamboozled us into thinking that lip oils are great. And for you, you might love them if you love a more lightweight product. But for me, it's just not something that I wanna spend my money on. This is another one on Dev's list. So products I'm no longer buying are sheet masks. And for a couple of reasons, first of all, I just, you know, I wanna avoid single use products. It's not sustainable. And I'm just trying to do my part to make Make easy swaps where I can to reduce waste. So that's an easy one. But I also just never found that sheet masks do anything aside from irritating my skin. Like I don't think I have tried a single sheet mask. I'm trying to think back in my like Rolodex memory here of all my beauty experiences. I just can't think of a single sheet mask I ever really liked. I feel like they are all irritating. They make my skin burn so badly, which obviously is the opposite effect that you want. So lately, if I want a hydrating mask, I'll use one that's just like in a jar, like a nice hydrating mask. Sometimes I'll just do a thick layer of moisturizer in my bath. I enjoy the Peach Slices Snail Mask as a hydrating option. And I just think that that is so much better. You get way better bang for your buck as well. So in terms of value, sustainability, and efficacy for me, sheet masks, are a no. I'm also no longer buying tanning products for a variety of reasons. First of all, they do not last on me. I mean, I even buy my Loving Tan, I think it's like the three hour express dark version. I will sleep in that. And I mean, that is like an intense amount of color and I can definitely get tan from that. It fades literally three days later. And it's like, what's the point? I exfoliate my body. I do my entire, like everything shower. I shave everything and then I do my tanning and it lasts for three days. So that is just absolutely not worth the effort for me whatsoever. I basically tan twice a year. If I go to a wedding and if I go to Coachella, that's it. There's just no point in me buying any other tanning products. I also find that if it's a face tanning product, they just break me out. I have tried everything. I've even tried the ones that they say are specifically formulated to not break you out. They always end up having fragrance or something that breaks me out. So the tanning products on my face don't work. The tanning products on my body never last. And I just feel like it's not worth the effort. So I'm not buying them anymore. Also, side note, has anyone been watching Love Island All-Stars? I'm like a huge huge Love Island fan. Those bitches are so tan. I mean, do they allow self-tanner in there? Because I remember a rumor that they weren't allowed to have self-tanner. So does that mean that they're all using tanning beds in the sun only? Oh, like it, it physically pains me to see how tan the Love Island girls are from the sun. Does anybody ever think about if the Love Island cast wears sunscreen? Because it really seems like they don't and I'm, I'm nervous for them. Another product I'm no longer buying are eyeshadow palettes. You know, I feel like I have my select few eyeshadow palettes that I really love. They're all kind of small and compact and travel friendly. I have 
have limited makeup skills. I consider myself a makeup intermediate. I'm not a beginner, I wouldn't say, but I'm definitely not an advanced makeup wearer. I pretty much only have the skills for a one and done eyeshadow. That's it. And it makes no sense for me to own an eyeshadow palette given how natural my makeup look is, especially as I age. The older I get, the more natural my makeup is. So I have my three M Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes that I absolutely love for more like interesting pops of color. I have my two Glossier palettes in Almond, which I'm wearing on my eyes today, and Teak, which is a darker, warmer brown. And then I have my Rowan quads, and that's really all that I need. The rest are just single shadows. And on that note, I feel like I have finally hit my capacity for single eyeshadows of the rose gold color and the matte brown category. And this is a really difficult one for me. This is something that like I really have to exercise that muscle of control on because the second I see a glittery eyeshadow, whether it's a powder or a cream or a palette, if it has like a peachy kind of tan or a rose gold kind of shade, anything that kind of looks like my eyelids, but a little bit warmer, oh, I just want it. Like I crave those eyeshadows. And it's the same thing I wear every day. And they all practically look the same on me, but I just want them. Like that's that's what my heart craves. Those kinds of eyeshadows and glitter toppers and then glossy lip products. But I have the ones that are my holy grails and I just don't need any others. And the same goes for matte brown eyeshadows. Like I have my Glossier Almond Antique palettes. Some of my favorite brown eyeshadows are in my M Cosmetics palettes. My Kaja Eyeshadow Trio and Chocolate Dahlia has perfect neutral matte brown shades. And those are the eyeshadows that I reach for on a daily basis the most. They're my most used category out of all of my eyeshadow and so I've got that covered and it can be tempting to purchase them but I'm all set and I just don't need to waste my money buying things that I already have and the last category is gonna be absolutely no surprise if you know me at all and I am not buying cream blush <laughs> Cream blush just does not last on me at all. Like I have tried them all and they fade on me within five minutes. I mean, even the Phytosurgeon Skin Spark Blush Bombs that everybody loves, gone from my face in literally five minutes. There are some cream blush formulas, whether they come in a little pot or they're more balmy or they're a stick or even a liquid. There are some that I really like and I keep around just because I love the colors and the formulas. Even though I acknowledge that they fade on me, there are some that I just really enjoy using. But because of that, I just don't need to spend my money on products that my face absolutely eats. And products like the new Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tints or the Bodyography Color Cassette Liquid Blush Stains, those are incredible. Those absolutely stain on the cheeks and last eight hours on me. So I live for those kinds of formulas that stain the cheeks, but otherwise it's just really not worth it for me to purchase. Aside from my Holy Grail Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand and Pillow Talk, that one lasts on me all day and I absolutely love it. But you know, aside from that, it's just not worth it for me to spend my money on. If you like this video and you want a way to support the channel without having to use my affiliate links or spend any money. You can subscribe, like this video, or leave a comment, and it really helps encourage YouTube to promote my videos to more people. I would love to know if this video inspired you to stop purchasing any products. What products are you not buying anymore? What products are just not worth your money? If you want to keep watching, I'll leave my new makeup video on the screen. I reviewed and applied 55 different shades of new makeup products, so it was a doozy of a video, and I hope you like it. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.